Hey guys, what is up? So today I'm gonna go over my top 10 Japanese exclusive games on the PlayStation Vita. Now this top 10 list will probably change in the future because it has changed in the past. Some Japanese games that would have been in my top 10 list have had English releases on other systems now. So I don't rank those as highly anymore even though they still technically qualify as exclusively Japanese on the Vita. Also, I'm still discovering new Japanese games, so you never know what I might discover in the future. Things are subject to change. And with that, here is my top 10 exclusive Japanese games on the PlayStation Vita. Number 10, Poyo Poyo Tetris. Poyo Poyo Tetris is a fun, lighthearted puzzle game with familiar mechanics and cute characters. So it does feature Tetris, and we do already have Tetris Ultimate on the Vita in North America, but Poyo Poyo Tetris offers both Tetris and Poyo Poyo, plus many combinations of the two. So there are a lot of different game modes to choose from, and generally it's a more enjoyable game in my opinion. Plus it's from Sega, whereas Tetris Ultimate is from Ubisoft. I put this at number 10 because you can usually find this game on many other platforms and I'm sure most people have at least played the Tetris part of it, but it's still a great version of a classic game that I'd recommend importing even if just to play on the go. Number 9, Gun Gun Pixies. This is a fun, unusual game where you get to play as a little pixie character sent down to Earth at a girl's dormitory to research human females. This is so that your species can better understand how to reproduce, a problem that your species has been having lately. So your job is to do all sorts of pervy things with the girls while they don't notice. There is this puzzle platforming element to it combined with gunplay that's just really fun and you'll be figuring out how to navigate these large rooms as a tiny character. It's kind of like playing Chibi Robo, if you've ever seen that one, but perverted. Now, pervy stuff aside, it's still a very fun, unique game. I put this at number nine because actually, you can get an English version of this on the Nintendo Switch or PC now. It used to be a Vita exclusive, and I would have put it much higher if that were still the case. If you're interested in knowing more, I also have an unboxing of the Gun Gun Pixies Limited Edition for the Vita, along with a more in-depth review on the channel. Number 8, Airship Q. Now this game is a lot like Terraria, or a two-dimensional side view version of Minecraft. Only you'll be sailing around on an airship to visit new lands, and you'll be playing as a cute cat character. This game is a ton of fun, but one of the coolest things is that there is actually a free update patch available for download, which will enable multiple language support, including English. Now, normally an English game wouldn't be on this list, but since the physical game is still Japanese and requires a download patch for the English language, then we're gonna count this one. There are so many different things to discover and craft, Plus, you can even customize your airship, which is essentially your own floating house that you can build however you like. One other great feature is that you can play multiplayer, up to four players in co-op or battle. It's a lot of fun. I definitely recommend this one. It was also ridiculously cheap when I picked it up several years ago. And doing a quick search, I still see it selling for around $17 so it's affordable too. And don't worry, even if you get the Japanese cover, it'll still have the English patch available for download. Number seven, Hello Kitty Block Crash. Hello Kitty Block Crash is a brick breaking game and it's my favorite puzzle game on the Vita. It's totally playable, even in Japanese, but what I love most about this is just how advanced the levels can get. There are more new concepts in this Hello Kitty brick breaking game than any other brick breaker I've played. It also uses a lot of the Vita's built-in hardware features like gyroscope, so you might have to tilt the Vita side to side to slide walls back and forth. There are also boss battles. It's just a really clever puzzle game and the characters are cute too. It doesn't have the traditional animal Hello Kitty characters, but the anime girl Hello Kitty characters. 
Anyway, I can't say enough good things about this game. It starts out pretty easy, but it will get challenging. And it just makes great use of the Vita hardware. If things are getting too hard, you can always try to go back to an easier level and getting a higher rating. The game is an absolute joy to play, but I'm sure this one probably won't work with the PlayStation TV just because it uses the gyroscope and other things. Number 6, Dungeon Travelers 2-2. Dungeon Travelers 2 Part 2 is a dungeon crawler, which there are plenty of on the system, but Dungeon Travelers is one that is definitely worth checking out. Just be aware, it is a bit lewd. If you've already played Dungeon Travelers 2 in English and want more, then Dungeon Travelers 2 Part 2 is this sequel which was only released in Japan. It doesn't take too long to figure out what each of the items do, especially if you're coming from playing the English version of Dungeon Travelers 2. And there's also that silver lining to playing the Japanese version anyway, because that means it won't be additionally censored like Dungeon Travelers 2 was in the West. I believe there was something like only four CGs that got censored, but you know, that's the good stuff. Number five, Macross Delta Scramble. Macross Delta Scramble has really awesome play control. The way that your mech transforms between the three different forms is so fluid and satisfying. You've got the ground mech to cover ground combat, the jet for traveling and attacking from a distance, and there's the half mech, half aircraft form that's great for gaining height and making tight maneuvers. So aside from the satisfying gameplay, you can also gain experience, level up your stats, and buy upgrades. And since this is Macross Delta Scramble, the female characters will be occasionally breaking out into song during battle. There's a lot of music, probably copyrighted, so I won't be playing that here. Number four, Tokyo Clan Pool. Tokyo Clan Pool is yet another dungeon crawler on the Vita. This one is pretty noteworthy though because it was one of the most recent dungeon crawlers on the system. So it has plenty of quality of life improvements. Things like auto turn, so if you get to the end of a corridor, your character will automatically turn in the correct direction if you're pressing up and there's only one way to go. Also, you can pick a location on the map to auto-navigate a path, and there are other cool things like the ability to jump over pits. It's a compile heart game, so the characters look cute and the art is very clean. I really like this one. Also, it wouldn't be a proper Vita game if it weren't at least a little bit lewd, so there's some of that too. Number three, Uppers. We recently looked at this game on the channel here, so I won't repeat what I said there too much, but basically this is a 3D brawler beat-em-up with some environmental finishers and outrageous moves. Your goal is to defeat your enemies and show off in front of your female fans to increase their admiration, eventually earning yourself some love letters and panties. You'll also have a support queen that provides buffs by basically being a cheerleader for your team, and you'll be able to unlock new clothing options for her, your fighters, and upgrade your own abilities as you progress. You can also replay missions to grind for more money and stats. It's pretty over the top with the fan service, which is why the PlayStation 4 release was inevitably canceled. However, a localized version has finally just made its way to Steam, which is an excellent version of this game. So if you aren't opposed to playing on your PC, I definitely recommend picking that one up. If you want to play on the go or with trophies, pick up this Vita version. It's not too difficult to navigate, even in Japanese. Number 2. Bullet Girls 2. Bullet Girls 2 is a third-person shooter that plays kind of like Senran Kagura, but with guns in the way that you can blast parts of the other girl's clothing off. You'll have different girls to choose from, and you can customize them with different guns, outfits, undergarments, and accessories that you collect and buy throughout the game. So just like with Dungeon Travelers, there's an English game in the Bullet Girls series. Bullet Girls Fantasia is available as an Asian English release, and it's a great way to get into the franchise. So if you like that, then consider picking up the other two Bullet Girls games, Bullet Girls 2, which is this one, 
and Bullet Girls 1. Both games are in Japanese, but aren't too difficult to figure out. Number 1. Genkai Toki 7 Pirates Seven Pirates is a part of the Genkai Toki series and the most recent on the PlayStation Vita. The series started off with Monster Mon Piece, then Moero Chronicle, Moero Crystal, and finally this game on the Vita, which was then followed up by Castle Panzers on the PlayStation 4. While Chronicle and Crystal are both dungeon crawlers with 2D character art, this game uses 3D models and actually plays more like a Neptunia game, with small 3D environments to explore filled with monsters that lead into turn-based combat. When you're ready to travel to a new area, you'll be viewing the world from the top down, sailing around in a pirate ship to get to various lands, trigger events, and discover new things. But what really sets this game apart from most Neptunia games is the traditional lewdness of the Genkai Toki series. So you'll be seeing a lot of familiar looking monsters now modeled in 3D. Also there is an egg hatching mechanic where you'll need to bust eggs open using your assets to reveal what's inside. Ooh, this one made a mess. There we got something. Speaking of assets, this game has a stat boosting feature where you can massage each of your character's breasts in certain ways to increase different stats by rubbing in circles, upward, downward, pinching, or other techniques. You'll either adjust the size or firmness of the chest, which will directly affect your character's stats and 3D model. Make them bouncy, firm, big, small, or any combination in between. Unfortunately, my capture software didn't do a very good job here since I was trying something new, but the game looks fantastic on the Vita. Everything is bright and runs smooth. I just love anything with a beach-like setting, bright, vibrant colors, especially on the OLED model. I really hope we can see an English port of this on the Nintendo Switch someday, just like we have with Moriro Crystal recently. But that being said, it's not too difficult to figure out, and if you're running modified firmware, there is supposedly an English patch available somewhere too. All right, guys, well, that is my top 10 Japanese exclusive games on the PlayStation Vita. And like I said, I'm always getting new Japanese game pickups, so I'm always discovering something new. So let me know if you guys have any recommendations of your own. Have a great rest of your day, and as usual, thanks for watching. Till next time, I will see you later.